Now that you've seen that this execution gives us the same result that we explained before, I want to show you two additional ways that people discuss the quantum state. Hi, welcome back to Coding with Kiskit. This is Abe again. You might remember in our last video, we talked about how we can build quantum circuits using Qiskit to manipulate qubits. Quantum circuits can be used to make qubits do all sorts of interesting things. The key to understanding quantum circuits, whether complicated or simple, will be to understand how quantum gates act on the individual qubits and how they work together. The point of this video will be to enable you to learn how quantum gates work on your own. Luckily, with the right tools, you can understand how all of Qiskit's quantum gates work. As open source software, Qiskit has a number of gates programmed into it already. So looking at my screen here, I'm showing you an overview of the quantum gates available in Qiskit. The link to this page will be available in the description below. So you can see here this list contains gates like the H gate, also called the Hadamard gate, CX, identity, U3 gates, U2 gates, U1 gates, and so on. And in fact, in Qiskit, you can even create your own custom gates. There are many different ways to think about quantum gates. Some of them are more visual and some of them are mathematical. So one of these gates, for example, is the X gate. So let's get right into it. Saying the X gate applied to state zero gives you the state one, and the X gate applied to state one gives you the state zero. So this is one representation that you'll see around. The other representation is to take note of the fact that these gates are actually unitary operations. And all that means is that they can be represented as matrices, unitary matrices in particular, and their operations can also be seen as operations on vectors, which are the states. So by doing that, the X gate is represented in this way. The zero state is represented in this way, and if you write out the matrix multiplication, you'll find out that the result is the following. So this is exactly equal to that representation. The third and fourth ways that you'll see people talking about how a quantum circuit works is in terms of both its visual representation and how the circuit works as a result of measurements. To see these, we'll go straight into Qiskit. As always, I'll start off by importing Qiskit into my workspace. So that can be done by typing out from Qiskit import everything. I will also be using the visualization tools in Qiskit. So I can do that by writing out from qiskit.tools.visualization import plot block multivector. Okay, so now that we've imported Qiskit and the right tools that we need to do our work, I'm going to do the following. So I'll create a quantum circuit with one qubit and one classical bit. So that quantum circuit will have one operation on it. It'll just be circuit.x applied to that qubit. So what I'm going to do is take this quantum circuit and simulate it and see what the output of that quantum circuit is. So the way to do that is to say, the simulator is air.get backend. This time I'm going to use what's called the state vector simulator. If you're curious, the state vector is the vector that describes the quantum state of our qubits. So that's where the name state vector simulator comes from. And I'll say execute the circuit on the backend that I choose to be the simulator, and I'll say the result from this execution will be stored in a variable called result, and the state vector will be result.getStateVector. And just so we can see that this is working, I'll say print state vector. All right, so as you can see, the state vector that's returned from the circuit when it only has one X gate on it is the vector zero with zero imaginary component and one with zero imaginary component. This state vector is exactly what you saw in our representation before where we wrote out X applied on the state zero is the state one. 
So let's look at our quantum circuit. So what I'm going to do is say circuit.draw and I'll be using the matplotlib output and I'll be saying just before that matplotlib inline. So what we're saying is the output of this quantum circuit is the state vector 0, 1. Now that you've seen that this execution gives us the same result that we explained before, I want to show you two additional ways that people discuss the quantum state. So the next way that I'm going to show you is a bit more visual and tends to be the favorite of a lot of people. What I can do is say plot block multivector and the thing I'm going to describe with this is the state vector. And this is what the state vector looks like when it's plotted on a block sphere. So one thing you'll notice is that people refer to operations on quantum states as rotations on the sphere. And in fact, what that X gate has done is take us from the state zero to the state one. And that's why that vector is pointing down in the direction of the state one. So it turns out that quantum states for individual qubits can be represented on this sphere as any point throughout the surface of the sphere. And in particular, the one that we're working on here, the state one is the very bottom point of the sphere. And finally, remember that you can always run this quantum circuit, execute measurements, and find out what the results of those measurements are. So in Qiskit, this is done as follows. So what I'm going to do is add a measurement to the circuit. And I'm going to measure qubit zero and put that result in classical bit zero. And I'm going to say, backend is air.get backend chasm simulator and I'm going to say execute this circuit on the backend and I would like to do 1024 shots and the result of this execution I'd like to take out and put in a variable called result and I would like to take the counts from this result. And plot them out by using the plot histogram tool, which is available from qiskit.tools.visualization. Import plot histogram. And there you have it. The result is that for 100% of the results, you get the result one. And that's because we have the state one represented by the output of the circuit. And just real quick, I also want to show you how to get the matrix representation of a circuit. And the way to do this is very simple. What I'll do is go back here. And instead of state vector simulator, what I'm going to do is say, I want the unitary simulator. So I'll just copy over this section of code and I'll say unitary simulator here, and I'll say the unitary is the output, and I'll change get state vector to get unitary. And I'll print out the unitary that results from this operation. And as you see here, the matrix that's printed out is 0, 1, 1, 0. And this is exactly the matrix that we used when we described the second method of talking about this quantum circuit, which is that the X gate is represented by the matrix 0, 1, 1, 0. And if you're curious, the meaning of these items 0, J is simply because each of these matrix elements is actually a complex number. So it has a real part and an imaginary part. And the number that you see here, for example, 0 plus 0 J means the real part is 0 and the imaginary part is also 0. This particular number has a real part one and an imaginary part zero. So that corresponds to the one that we've been seeing in our matrices before. So we showed four different ways to talk about a quantum gate. One way is to describe its operation by writing down, as we saw before, for example, for the X gate by saying X applied on the state zero gives you the state one. The second way that we used was to describe the linear algebra behind how this gate works by saying the matrix for the X gate, which is 0, 1, 1, 0, acting on the vector for the zero state, 
which is 1, 0, gives you the vector for the 1 state, which is 0, 1. The third way that we used to describe the operation of the X gate was by showing you something more visual, by plotting out the state vector that results from applying that gate on a block vector. And the fourth way that we used to describe its operation is by running a circuit through a measurement and seeing what the measurement outcomes are. So hopefully with all these tools, you're now equipped to answer the question of how a quantum gate works. And every time you encounter a new one, you can ask yourself the question of how it's actually working in a quantum circuit. So now that you know how to understand all of Qiskit's quantum gates, it's important for you to know that you're ready to move on to building more complicated quantum circuits. Next week, we'll be covering your first quantum algorithm, and this will be quantum teleportation. Let us know which method of talking about quantum gates made more sense to you. For me personally, I like to see the quantum circuit represented as a matrix. So I like to write code in Qiskit and find out what the matrix corresponding to a quantum gate looks like. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.